Hey guys, welcome back to Jason and Joni Builds. Uh, we're back in the shop today on our 1966 Bronco project. We're going to reassemble our Dana 30 uh, front differential. So uh, before we get started, you guys, remember to give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and here we go. Hey guys, so uh, as you noticed, I, I didn't put out a video last week. Uh, I was, we were in the shop, we made a video, I was getting towards the end, and uh, come to find out the gears, the I was going to try to reuse the original gears, and they weren't good. They, uh, as I was setting them up, I had the pinion right, the pinion depth right, backlash was good, but we just couldn't get, I couldn't get my pattern where I wanted it, and it's just not worth, um, you know, I had to buy a couple extra bearings just to redo it again and a set of gears. But I'm not going through this much work to have that thing whine. So, uh, anyway, I'm sorry, but uh, I would just kind of, it kind of put me down a little bit. And uh, I just felt like I needed to walk away from the shop a little bit. <laughs> so, uh, I'm sure you guys have that issue too sometimes. But we're back out here today. Uh, I've replaced the gear, the bearings that I had to basically destroy to remove from the carrier. I bought a new set of 410 gears for the front end. And so uh, luckily we didn't have any of the seals put in, so I didn't ruin any of the seals. But uh, we're just gonna start this video over one more time. So, uh, well, I'll just show you real quick what I've got. I broke, when I broke my rear end down, basically pinion, this is pinion depth shims here uh, the the numbers you see and it's well i measured the uh, the thickness in thousands i've got all that my left and right uh, carrier shims what i put in afterwards this is a set of setup bearings that you're going to have to have if you're going to do this job you're going to have to buy you an extra set of bearings and then if you have a uh, a dremel or a post sander but what you need to do is just sort of keep honing this out until these bearings will slip onto your carrier. You're going to have to have these set up. That way you can get your shims right and set your backlash. Without these, you push these on and you don't get it right, you have to destroy your bearings to get them off. So go ahead and spend the money, have your extra set of bearings. In, inside and outside seals, pinion seal, caps, and then it comes with the setup grease, Loctite for the ring bolts. So uh, basically we have everything we need. <laughs> And before we go any further here, I'm going to tell you, so if I'm going to show you the way I was taught to set up a rear end, I don't have the correct pinion depth tool, which actually the bearing caps that goes across the caps. I have a machinist friend of mine taught me how to set up a rear end and I'll show you guys how he showed me. I'm telling you that saying that, so please don't in the comments start telling me, you know, there's a tool for that. I know I don't have that tool. And I'm thinking maybe a lot of you guys don't either. So if you take your time, you can do it. And you can do it with, I, I do have a backlash measuring tool, but you can do it with, you know, a regular gauge. Bear with me. If you don't like this approach, that's completely fine. You can get the pinion depth tool. So we get that out of the way. I know a lot of people ask what the markings on the bottom of your gear is for. So I, I did want to touch on that real quick. This pinion has got a 74 at the top and then 2.267 inscribed below it. The top number, the 74, is for the gear set. So this pinion goes with only one uh, ring gear, and the ring gear has got the same 74 uh, scribed on it. Because if you ever buy a used set of gears, which I don't recommend, but if you do, you need to make sure that they are matched. All right, 74. That's what we're looking for, guys. Sorry, that was a little hard to find. The 2.267 is your pinion depth on your gear, and that's from the face of the pinion to the uh, to your machine surface on your bearing caps. So if you were to lay a truly flat piece of steel from cap to cap, if you were to measure from the top down to this, you would have to mount it, you'd subtract the thickness of the plate that you're standing on, right? 
So that'll be your pinion depth. And, uh, and that's how I set up a rear end. It's basically the same premise as your other tool. This is how I find that distance from that horizontal position down to the pinion. So I'll show you that in a minute. So the first thing we need to do is get our ring gear back on our, on our carrier. So basically what I'm going to do, it comes with new bolts in the kit, the Loctite. I'm going to put the ring on and then I'm going to torque it to 60 foot pounds. So I'm just going to, you want to do a cross torque pattern. So you start at 12 to 6, you know, 1, 7, and just keep going around your carrier until you get your bolts torqued. We'll do is just put a little little drop of red Loctite on each bolt. So we'll just carry this all the way around. Alright guys, so what I'm gonna do is like I said, I'm gonna start sort of in the right here is like more like the one o'clock position. You know, I'm just gonna go across the bolts. I'm just keep going across and I'm gonna torque it twice. So basically I'm gonna take them to 50 the first time and then I'll take it to 60 the second. When it comes to actually telling you what to use, I can't do that as far as the shims go. It's a process going in and out with your pinion. So what you have is this uh, little oil, um, basically oil seal that goes in there. It's, it's kind of a crazy looking shim. And then we have shims on the bottom of it. A lot of people will tell you when you disassemble it, start off with the shims that was in the the housing to begin with. This one had 42 thousandths uh, shims in it. I've already went back together with mine and I've had to drop it to 37 to get the proper pinion depth. Taking your pinion in and out isn't as bad as it would be on the carrier. I've, uh, I can knock this bearing out pretty easy. It, uh, it does have to get pressed on with your pinion yoke but when you knock it back out, I'll just start the, the nut back on it and gently just tap it back out. So when you have to do that five, six, ten times, don't sweat it. Just if you rush it and just say, oh, that's good enough, you're going to regret it. So uh, let's go ahead and get our pinion in and we'll check our pinion depth. I've already got my shims there. I've already got my bearing pressed on. You guys have watched me press bearings on before. And then it comes with a new shield. So just make sure you put your shield on, slide your bearing on, press it in, make sure it's good and tight. And then we have our race and our shims here. Okay, another thing about uh, Dana 30, uh, I'm sorry guys, this is kind of jumpy. There's just a lot to explain. Uh, they don't have crush sleeves in these Dana 30 and the Bronco. So you have to shim it to get your preload, or your bearing preload on your pinion. And again, I've already uh, worked mine out. It had 60 thousandths in it, and right now we're at 48. And I was a little tight before, but it felt kind of clunky, and I didn't really like the way it felt. So I had to pull this shim out of my old uh, shim pack. It's about a 2 thousandths shim, and I'm hoping I'll be in good shape. So we'll find out here in a second. I don't put the, the pinion seal in until the end, until I know everything's done. Then we'll knock this in because I don't want to ruin it. So you guys see I've got my rear end housing just on these saw horses. Well, I've already got the races driven in too, guys. I'm sorry. I didn't show you that. Your shim's in. Your bearing. It has a seal also. I mean, guess that, uh, forget exactly what the technical term is for that washer, but I believe it's some type of oil guard or oil seal. And your nut and a washer than your nut. All right guys, this kit come with a new nut and I'm trying not to, you know, wear the crush out of it because it's, it's a castle nut and it's a locking nut. 
and just the more you run this thing in and out you'll start bending these uh, little ears up and you won't have the uh, the effect that you're looking for so what I do is I use the new washer su supplied and the old washer and I, I just use two of them stacked together that way I'm not when I tighten this thing up it's not crushing going all the way down on the nut final assembly will remove the washer and we get it all torqued down Okay, you're going to have to torque this uh, pretty close. I usually take it to about 150, so you know you're getting the right, uh, at least close to the right preload. <clears throat> that is hard to get. All right, guys, I call this 2x4 a gut protector. <laughs> So now we'll check the rotation, uh, what kind of preload we have on our bearing. This is just an inch, inch pound torque wrench, a Mac tool. And uh, what we want to measure is how much it takes to, to rotate. Fourteen inch pounds. I like the way this feels. It's it's got a little it's got feedback, but it's not like I don't feel like the the bearings like trying to bind. You know, it feels good. Okay, guys, we talked about pinion depth earlier. Two point two six seven. Two point two six seven is from the face of these machine surfaces where your bearing caps mount. And what I have here is a, um, this has been machined. I don't know if you can tell the back of it. This right here is perfectly straight. And uh, it's, this is good. So what I do is I bolt that to the top. You can see where I, I mic'd it. You know, this is how thick the material is. This is the upside. And then what I do is I just bolt this in place. So what I do from here guys, is I take my caliper, I make sure I'm zeroed out, then I, I'll just run it down with my thumb until I contact the top of the gear. Well you say, well what if your tool is sideways or whatever. So well, what you have to do is since it's wide you can tell that you're sitting flat like towards the bolts, but in and out. So you can sort of watch the dial, Johnny. So guys, if you'll watch, when I take the, the caliper, I'll go push it back a little bit and you watch it climb. I pull it to me and it climbs again. What we have to do is find that, that bottom spot. And it's gonna be 2.456. All right. 2.456 minus 1 1.189 2.267 which is exact so we're going to go with this so it's at 2.267 so what we need to do now is set our carrier in and start checking our backlash and see what it looks like and before and I'm going to leave the mock-up bearings in it we're gonna take the, uh, the grease, we're gonna check the pattern. If the pattern looks good, we'll pull the carrier back out, we'll put the correct bearings on it, we'll drive our seals in, and then we'll be done. Okay guys, like I told you, the backspacing is, uh, again, one of these things that you're gonna have to test fit, and that's why I bought an extra set of bearings and, and honed them out like I was telling you. This one's a little aggravating. <laughs> But anyways, it'll come off, you put your shims on. What I pulled off was 47 and 50 thousandths. What I put back in is 45 and 50 thousandths. And then uh, 
we're going to see how that looks and it, what you want when these things go into the case you want that you have to take a you want to be able to take a dead blow hammer or something that's a rubber hammer if you don't know don't hit it with a regular a rubber hammer and drive this in because you want this to go in really tight you don't want it just to slide in then you won't have any preload on your carrier bearings so I've already got the shims on I've got my practice or my setup bearings there get this thing set in And that's about how you want it. You want it to be tight, guys. You know, that feels really good. And then I have my caps. I don't know if you guys remember when we disassembled this uh, differential, I marked my caps. I have a dot. Johnny probably won't be able to see it from here, but there's a dot on the case here, and that corresponds with one dot on this cap. This case has got two dots, which corresponds with two dots here. And I marked them on the side that they're at too, so I know that that one goes there and that one's there. Because these need to go back in just how they come out because they're machined only one way. You put them in wrong, you'll you'll bind everything up. Alright guys, I'm gonna torque my cat bolts to 50. Let's check our backlash before we uh, try to check our pattern. To make it see if we're even close. This is when you're going to really need a dial indicator. And this one's got the magnetic base. Okay, guys, we have nine thousandths. I'm going to let Joni show you here. Backlash. According to our dial indicator. Yeah, so what I did is I went to Motive Gear. That's where I got the gears from. They uh, recommend seven to nine thousandths backlash. We have nine thousandths. And then here they had the, uh, the carrier cap bolts. They say torque them to uh, 60 to 65. So I did, I did bump it up. I, I said 50 to start with. So I just torqued them to uh, about 65, all of them. So now, moment of truth, let's hope that we get the right pattern when we roll it. So as you see, I've already painted my gears. And we'll run it through a time or two and see what it looks like. Seems to be just a little high on the gear. It's not too bad. They say you actually want your contact pattern to be just a little bit towards the toe. Not quite centered. Turn this the other direction now and see what they look like on the coast side of the gears. Oh, that's so much better. So you guys can see that my my coast side, which is the back side, we're in the center again. What I had before was I had a, a deep toe. There's a, a mark on the deep toe and then it was more centered on the drive side, so the gears would have probably made some noise. So that's actually pretty good. Let's consult our book here. And kind of what that's what they're saying here, guys, is you, your pattern, you really want them to be a little bit more towards the toe. So let's see. What do you think, Johnny? That seems to be a little bit more towards the outside. Would you agree? Yes, I agree. So I need to move. Let's see what we need to do to move and get our pattern to move towards the toe just a little bit. What I did is I was looking at the pattern before, uh, just a few minutes ago. You could tell I was a little closer to the heel than I was the toe. And right now we're in much better shape. It's what I did was I tightened up the backlash just a little bit. Uh, I was a little nervous about the pinion, so I went in and actually added uh, three thousandths uh, shim to the pinion, put it back together. I was going to show you that if it, if it changed anything. Well, it did. It actually changed it. Actually, my patterns went from um, 
one towards the toe, one towards the heel. And so that tells me that I had my pinion right because if you look at my coast and my drive side, both of my patterns are centered. So then it's just more of a backlash uh, deal. And I had like nine thousandths before. Uh, and you can spin the gear and you might get just a little bit more, just a grunt less. But uh, what I did is I took just a little bit of backlash out. I'm at seven thousandths now. So I'm right on the tight side of what Motive Gear says to set them up. But um, I think Journey showed you, but this is my pattern. Uh, disregard all this is just where it spun before. So you can see where we're hitting and then show them on the other side, Joni. See the drive and the coast side. So my pattern is good. So I'm gonna call this good. Uh, my pinion is good, the uh, gears are good. So what I'm gonna do now is before I did all this, I measured my bearings and actually I, got, I bought the same manufacturer but I wouldn't count on them always being right, but these were right, the actual the dimension. I, I put the bearing and the race together, had a flat surface on the bottom, and I measured the depth of both bearings and compared them to my fit-up bearings, and everything's sort of the same. So all I should have to do now is pull my fit-up bearings off and put my new bearings, press them on with the same shims, don't touch them, put it all back together, and we should be good, be good to go. So uh, uh, I don't know that there's any reason for me to, get, to show you guys just pe pressing the bearings back on. But uh, again, I'm gonna take these off, press the bearings on, put it back together. I do have to show you guys something. We gotta put the seals in. I, didn't, I told you I wasn't gonna put the seals in until I was happy with all this, but I gotta put the seals in now. Okay, your seals for your Dana 30 guys are, are different. Uh, well, as far as the inside and outside. The inside is a little bit narrower ID they, have, they both have the same OD, but the inside, remember, is narrower, the outside is wider. So these will go on the inside, and then you have your little uh, uh, axle guide tubes that go in there. I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so you have your little guides. You got one on one side and one on the other. That just sort of helps line your axle up as you're pushing it through. The oil seal, you're springing all, this is your oil side. So usually you put in a seal, this is what you see. But since we're working from the inside, this, this will actually be the correct orientation of the seal. So we gotta get that and easy. Try to set that thing in there without tearing it up. I know that kind of looked painful, guys, but it's uh, just really trying to take it easy, not hit it too hard. Okay, same thing again. I went ahead and put the pinion seal in. And we got our two inner seals in. So I just went ahead and pulled the, the pinion back out. So. And I went ahead and just oiled my seal just a little bit for when I put the, the yoke back through it. Okay guys, so I've, I've, I went ahead and pulled my pinion back down. This is the final assembly. So we're gonna do like we did the Dana 20. We're gonna put a heavy bead of RTV around the, the base of this washer. And basically that'll help seal these splines. You guys laugh, but you do what you gotta do. Guys, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and press on my bearings for the final time. So again, I had my my setup bearings. You see how they just sort of come on and off. So I'm gonna go. I've got my shims there. I didn't have to change anything. So I'm just gonna go press these on.
Guys, I just want to check this one last time since I got the final gears pressed on, everything's torqued, seals are in. Now I'll check my backlash. We still have seven. Thank God. <laughs> seven thousandths. Perfect. Let me paint my gears. Look at that one last time. Done. Hey guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my drill to run them in so I make sure I can I get a good pattern. <clears throat> There we go. Let's see the other side. Well. As good as I can get them. They are, they are right beside each other. The gears, uh, the pattern looks good. Okay, that's the last one's gonna spawn us to me on death play. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> the pattern looks good, front and back. Uh, the coast side and the drive side, they're in the center. Backlash is at seven thousandths. Everything's torqued. I'm done. <laughs> so, so guys, you can do this. And I set it up right the first time. I second guessed myself. I checked it and I added the shim. I didn't need it. It threw my uh, coast and drive side actually. They, they say when they start walking away from each other, that means that your pinion's wrong. My pinions, they're both in the center. Uh, both my drive and coast side are in the center. So backlash is good. I'm leaving it alone. We'll see what she sounds like. Uh, sorry about the long video. I hope this helps you guys. Um, you can set it up. Maybe I've made the mistakes for you and you don't have to make them. So remember, if you got old gears, do yourself a favor by new gears. <laughs> Extra set of bearings for your carrier so you can have them for your setup. Uh, have all your seals available. Keep all your shims because what they send you with these kits, you don't always have exactly what you need and you have to borrow some from there. Maybe we can get one more of these done this long weekend. But uh, thank you guys for sticking with me and watching this, this video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Have a great day. Bye.